this is Richard Smith with the Kansas City Chiefs Power Hour. Uh, how we doing, Chiefs Nation? Uh, day after 4th of July. I hope you all had a great 4th of July. I did. I'm excited for the show today. Um, we're touching base on one of my favorite subjects with the Kansas City Chiefs, as well as most fans I'm, I'm well aware of. Um, we're going to touch base on the skill set players today. Uh, you know, and that's probably the most exciting aspect of the Kansas City Chiefs here in the last couple of years, and we just keep adding pieces to the puzzle left and right. You know, Alex Smith had a bunch of weapons, and Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, and Kareem Hunt. And, you know, he was producing 4,000-yard seasons, you know, having some of the best stats of his life. So that put us in a position with Mahomes, you know, to go ahead and go out and get Sammy Watkins to compliment, you know, Mahomes and, and, and Kelsey and, and, and Hunt and, and Hill. And, you know, you look at the four skill set players that we have, they are arguably the best in the NFL, hands down. I mean, you look at Pittsburgh and how dynamic they are. Uh, you know, in the last few years, that's kind of been our speed bump. The one team that we just cannot get past. But with all the problems that are going on in Pittsburgh right now, with Roethlisberger not really accepting the new quarterback coming in underneath of him, you know, I didn't expect that out of Roethlisberger. I figured he would be a, a class act and help the guy out underneath of him. But, you know, he's not an Alex Smith. That's not the case. And I think as the Kansas City Chiefs organization, we need to go ahead and um, take advantage of that. Let's exploit the weaknesses that are in uh, Pittsburgh right now. And it might not be talent. They're mental weaknesses. But those are just as – have just as big of an impact, you know, as a, a hurt player. You know, you have your, your biggest star go down for the year. Um, you know, you're – you're really trying to pick up the pieces. And you really do the same in a psychological game, too. Um, you know, if Ben Roethlisberger isn't feeling like his position is intact, well, it's going to mess with his game. And depending on who he is, um, you know, it could either go positive or negative. But enough about the Steelers. Let's get back to the Chiefs. You know, one thing I want to make a point of is how well Andy Reid gets the ball around. You know, Travis Kelsey has been our stud go-to guy here for the last few years. And last year, he had 83 receptions, 1,083 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns. And, you know, you can't argue with that. Um, you know, he had more yards uh, than, than Hill um, and more touchdowns. You know, I'm not saying that he is a, a more productive player. I can't say that. Um, it's just hard to spread the ball around to all these all these playmakers, you know, like Tyreek Hill with his 75 receptions, you know, 1,183 total receiving yards and seven touchdowns. You know, that's a huge year. Um, but it's one of those things that, as a personal standpoint, stats matter to players. But as far as spreading the ball around in a team aspect, um, you know, those numbers are still great. Um, you know, you, you look at Kareem Hunt, um, 1,327 yards rushing, uh, eight touchdowns. Uh, I'm not really sure what his receiving stats are. I don't have those written down in front of me right now. Um, but, you know, he's the lead, league's uh, leading rusher as a rookie. So, you know, we have a tight end and a receiver going over 1,000 yards. We have a 1,300-yard rushing running back, you know, the number one rusher in the league as a rookie. And then we go out and get Sammy Watkins. You know, and Sammy Watkins was kind of in an odd position last year with the Rams. It seemed like his role wasn't exactly established. Uh, he seemed like more of a, a, a number two wide receiver. You know, he had 39 receptions with 430 yards. But the catch was, this man had eight touchdowns. So he had half as many touches half as many yards as, as Tyreek and, and Kelsey, but still produced as many touchdowns. So you look at Big Red and where he was, you know, what he was looking at as far as Watkins as his big play aspect. You know, you hear some things about Watkins dropping balls and, you know, he's not a, an every down receiver. Or he's not going to play a complete season. That's the tune that we heard when we first went after Watkins. 
now as time goes on and people hear Watkins and watch Watkins and Mahomes and you, you listen to, to Watkins talk about just he's a family man. He wants to learn. You know, he's a team player, which I think that our entire team is right now. We don't really have a guy on our team that is really about himself. And, you know, I think that's kind of one of the reasons why we let go of Peters is, you know, he you could tell that. The man just uh, was a little bit about himself. But at the same time, he was a great player, and he's going to do wonders with the Rams. So we look at Mahomes. You know, we look at Kelsey, Hill, Watkins, and Hunt. I see 3,000-yard receivers. I see three receivers that will have nine-plus touchdowns. I'd like to see them get in the double digits, even though that's hard to do, especially with Watkins coming in and having to spread the, the ball around you know, as much as we do. Um, I, I just I, I cannot find a weakness on, on our skill set positions. Um, you know, we have we have good depth too. Demetrius Harris, that guy can pull in some great, great balls. He he uh he's not scared to go up and, and get them. He's not scared to make blocks. Uh he's not scared to go, you know, over the middle of the field. Um so you look at the playmakers, and these guys extend plays on their own. You know, we didn't have a quarterback who could extend plays before. So now that we have a quarterback who can extend plays, we have skill set players that understand how to create plays, how to understand, you know, to to change up their route, to get into open field, to, to find a lane for Mahomes to throw to. Um, and, you know, with our vertical attack that I think that we're going to have, you know, we're going to spread Hill and, and Watkins out wide. You know, we throw Kelsey on one side, you know, kind of in a double set. And, you know, you put a big body in front of either Watkins or Hill. And, you know, let's let them run vertical. Um, you know, you got the safeties over the top really trying to contain the, you know, the speed. So then that's when we go after, you know, Travis Kelsey in the flat. Or we do a dump pass to Kareem Hunt out of the backfield and watch him run 60 yards downfield. Why? Because Kelsey, Hill, and Watkins are extremely aggressive. They're good blocking receivers slash tight end. They they have it all. They all can play ball. They all can play ball. And you just keep hearing this praise about Mahomes from everyone. Um, Everyone. Everybody thinks he's going to be the next superstar. And I just, I can't argue with that. I don't think that they're... Is anybody in Chiefs Nation who would honestly be able to pit, put up a good argument with how good Mahomes is going to be? I look at the analysts and I look at ESPN and I listen to the radio and listen to all these podcasts and talk about Kansas City being in the cellar and, and this, that, and the other. And, you know, that is typical, you know, Kansas City Chiefs football. That's... Yeah. That's kind of the what us as fans have lived with over the last 20 years. And so we're used to it. Uh, every year's the year. But let's be 100% honest. We've never had skill set players like this on our team. We've never had a quarterback like we had on our team. Our defense is good. Our special teams is amazing. Um, you know, everybody will always try to poke holes in something that's perfect. Um, and... <laughs> You know, you just look at this roster and it's just packed. I really can't. I don't even look at the Steelers roster and say that it compares to the Chiefs. There isn't a roster out there. Um, And, you know, and this is how good our skill set players are. Um, There was a poll in Kansas City Chiefs Nation as to would we trade Tyreek Hill straight up for... Uh, what's that receiver from New York? Um, yeah, I'm drawing a, drawing a blank to his name right now. Oh, God. Oh, Odell Beckham Jr. Will we trade Tyreek Hill straight up for Odell Beckham Jr.? An astonishing 90% of Chiefs Nation said they would not do it. And I agree with that. You know, we got a couple analysts out there that don't quite understand and, you know, look at 
look at Odell Beckham as still the best receiver in the league. Odell was the best receiver in the league three years ago. Now there's this guy by the name of Tyreek Hill. That man is the best receiver in the game, hands down. You can't guard him. He's got good hands. He blows right past you. And he's got confidence. He knows he's going to dust you. You know he's going to dust you. Your team, your fans, my team, when everybody knows it's going to happen, there's only one thing that can happen. So we're just going to keep sending Tyreek vertical. We're going to send Sammy vertical. We're going to, you know, we're going to utilize Kelsey uh, in the flats and, you know, run the play action. You know, let's shove the ball down their throat. Let's get Kareem another 1,300-yard rushing season, but let's give him 10 to 12 touchdowns. You know, if you look at Smith and you look at 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, and four interceptions, I think that Mahomes can have 5,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, and probably seven or eight interceptions. But those are Super Bowl caliber numbers. Um, I'd rather have the eight interceptions with with everything else that he brings to the table, you know, compared to Alex Smith and possibly not getting over the hump of the first or second round of the playoffs. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't see us losing those close games anymore. I don't see those teams be able to come back like Tennessee did against us in the playoffs last year or, or the Colts. You know, we've just had this drought of playoffs. Um, we've had a drought of winning home games in the playoffs. We have a drought of not going to the AFC championship game. And it's almost a curse. You know, you look at Kansas City as a whole until the Royals won the, the World Series. You know, Kansas City kind of felt like we were under a curse. Well, Thanks to Andy Reid and, and John Dorsey and, and now Brett Veach, you know, our organization's, you know, in the best position that we've been in, you know, probably in 45 years to go ahead and, and, and take down that beast of burden that we've had over our head as, you know, Chiefs Nation. Um, and then, you know, they're hungry. They want to bring a Super Bowl to Kansas City. You know, you look at that World Series victory and, and the parade and, you know, how much Kansas City was completely backing the Royals. Um, it was magical. It was a fun time. You know, the organization enjoyed it. The city enjoyed it. The fans enjoyed it. Now imagine that platform with the Chiefs. We love our Royals. But the Chiefs? Oh, this is going to be a whole other party. Um, we might have to shut down the city if we win the Super Bowl. And I look forward to that. You know, and I'm not interested in any Super Bowl until the Chiefs are in it. I'm 34 years old, and I've never seen a Chiefs Super Bowl. Um, you know, I, if you're 40 years old, 45 years old, 49 years old, you've never seen a Chiefs Super Bowl. I mean, you want to talk about some diehard fans. I mean, we have stood by our organization. We have stood by our city, our teams, our players, even in the darkest of times. We still stood by them. We're still selling out Arrowhead. It's no secret and no surprise that we have the loudest stadium in the world. Our fans are second to none, and nobody can argue with that. So you take our fans, you take Andy Reid, you take Mahomes, Kelsey, Hill, Watkins, Hunt, you know, you look at Eric Berry, Anthony Hitchens, uh, you know, you look at all these key, amazing players, and you say, is this finally the roster and the depth chart that is going to get us to that point? Is this it? Is this it? Well, fans, I want to say that I think it is. Um... I want to touch base on one thing on uh, my episode next week. I am going to have uh, Cody Hunt from 810 Radio Sports and Fox 41 News in Kansas City as a guest on my show next week. Um, we haven't set an exact date yet, but I'm excited to get him on the show. Um, I also want to let you guys know that I am on iTunes, um, soon to be on SoundCloud, um, Spreaker.com, YouTube. Uh, and it's, it's growing. It's growing. Um, you know, I produce a couple more shows here. iHeartRadio I is going to pick me up. And we're going to make this thing big. This is for Chiefs Nation. You know, this, this is for Kansas City. 
um, as a whole, the greatest place to raise a family ever. There's a reason why Alex Smith was upset to leave. It didn't just have to do with football and, you know, the organization. It had to do with Kansas City as a whole. It's a great place to live. It has a great fan base. Um, and it, it just overall, um, it's an exciting time in Kansas City, period. So, as we look forward to this season... And we, we move through this off season, you know, we start the mini camps and, and all that, and then we start doing the cuts and we get into preseason. I think we'll start seeing a little more Mahomes and what to expect from him. It's uh gosh, you know, it's up in the air. And I think everybody knows that. But what a good way. What a great way to start the season for the Chiefs. I continue to, you know, to look back at these past Chiefs teams and these, the lack of skill set players that we've had. And, you know, we've never, 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 never had a complete team. Never. There's always been, there's always been question marks and there's always always been weaknesses and you know our biggest weakness is Steven Nelson and that's not even a huge weakness because we have depth um you know it's it's one of those things that in NFL you know points are going to happen turnovers are going to happen touchdowns are going to happen and and it's something that can't be avoided you just prepare yourself each and every week to to make sure that that those things don't happen against you so we'll see how Steven Nelson comes out and and prepares. And, you know, the first couple of games will give us a great idea, especially against Pittsburgh, especially against Pittsburgh. Um, I think it's good that we have them early in the season just to see exactly where the defense is at and what we need to do to maintain um, throughout the season. So I really look at the offense and I, lo- I look at – that's the most important factor here. You know, defense is great, but this is the year of the quarterbacks. So you have that many great quarterbacks in the league, you expect a ton of points to be put up. If there's a ton of points to be put up and there's a lot of quarterbacks that pick apart any defense, well, then your goal is to score more points than them. So how do you do that? You bring the most dynamic skill set players in that you possibly can. Exactly what Andy Reid did. This five-year process that this man has been in, look at the transformation of our organization in five years solely, solely because of Andy Reid. And you can say what you want about the man. He never won a Super Bowl. He chokes. He's not a good time clock manager. Well, guess what? We got a guy named Mahomes that can manage the game himself. So that'll take pressure off of Andy Reid making calls. I, I, you know, I know we all know that look that Andy Reid has. That one look. It's just like a deer caught in the headlights. And then when that happens, it seems like kind of things start to fall apart after that. It gets in his head. But I don't think that Andy Reid has to worry about that anymore. Andy Reid's never even had a team like this around him. Um, so, and then, you, you know, you listen to Brett Veach. Brett Veach says that Mahomes is the best player that he has ever seen. Now, keep that in mind. That is a Kansas City Chiefs general manager talking about a player that is the best player that he has ever seen in his life. So, Kansas City, let's go get us a Super Bowl. Let's show the NFL what we're made of. Let's end this drought in Kansas City. Let's start a dynasty. I would love to have a Super Bowl celebration in Kansas City four years in a row. How does that sound, Kansas City? Look, I'm excited. I don't know about Kansas City Chiefs Nation. Well, I do. I know they're excited, but I can't speak for them. But my excitement is through the roof. And I usually keep a calm and collective uh, you know, tone, but I just... I can't help but get excited about this team. I've never been excited like this in my entire life. You know, I, I the feeling when I think about the Chiefs that I get is just calm. Calm, cool, and collective. Like it's no big deal. Like we're like we're destined 
to be in the Super Bowl. We're destined to win the Super Bowl. And now all that's happening is, you know, the steps that build up along the way to get us to that point. And I look for us to have a 13-3, and 12-4 and 4 season. I look for us to win the AFC West. I look for us to win the AFC Championship game. So all the naysayers out there, oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think about the Chiefs. Oh, they, they can't be as dynamic as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, guess what, NFL? We are more dynamic than the Pittsburgh Steelers. We are a better team than the New England Patriots. We are a better team than the Oakland Raiders. We are a better team than, the, than Houston so there's no holes that you can poke in our team anymore. There's no comparison. There's no team in the AFC like the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I won't. I won't listen to the Pittsburgh argument anymore. I won't. I won't. Um, their ship has sailed. They didn't do what they had to as a team to get over their hump too. So now they're backtracking. Um, they're having they're having um, contract problems with Bell. Um, you know, and, and I just look at all the crybabies and all the, this, there's too many personalities on that team, including the coach. And now they're starting to clash. You knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. So what do we do as the organization? We exploit that weakness and we take advantage of it. And we shove this win down Pittsburgh's throat and hope we see him in the playoffs so we can shove it down their throat again. And then we'll move on and we'll go play the Patriots and we'll shove it down their throat and shut everybody up. Come on, Rams, Eagles, whoever is going to be in the NFC, Kansas City is ready for you. Chiefs Nation is ready for you. We're ready for a Super Bowl victory. Let's go, Kansas City. Let's get excited. Let's get up and let's go. This is our team. This is our year and this is our time. Don't mistake it, Kansas City. Don't mistake it. Well, that wraps up my skill set players episode here on Kansas City Chiefs Power Hour. This is Richard Smith. I thank you for tuning in with me. And like I said, Cody Tapp from 810 Radio Sports and 41 News Kansas City will be a guest on my show next week. Please tune in on iTunes, um, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Spreaker.com, um, soon to be SoundCloud. Um, we're getting everywhere, Kansas City. Um, so let's make this podcast something special. Let's get these Kansas City Chiefs up and rolling this year, and let's bring a Super Bowl to Kansas City. It's time. We deserve it. I thank you for tuning in this broadcast, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.